Uh, Tim had something to share, right? Um, I just want to come up real quick, and um, the song before that and this song, it just made me think about Acts this Thursday night when I went, and I was talking about at times I don't pray as much as I should, but I fall asleep sometimes praying, and I wake up and start where I left off with that same next word that needs to come. And when Melissa, this is like the song, oh, you'll call upon him, he see you, and maybe think about Psalm 6, and Psalm King David, you know, you're talking about start with despair, how his life his soul looks vest, his body is torn, and he's weary. But by the end of it, you know, he's saying, you would defeat my enemies, I have nothing to worry about, and you got me. And just the simple thing, Melissa, you know, pretend like she's God, say, no, no, that's my son. I love him. I'm proud of him. And she just kind of sat back in the chair. You know, the songs just kind of reminded me that, you know, I'm down on myself and stuff like that, and I you know how my day is like anybody else. You know, he sits back, and he just looks at me, even in my mistakes, and, you know, that's my son. I'm proud of him. I love him. Mm-hmm. And so like, I just, right. you know. I just look at my son at Tom Devin, and you know, he makes his mistakes, and I make my mistakes. You know, like mom looks at me, because she's here today. You know, the love that she gives me, he gives me, I don't deserve, but God loves us anyway. And so the songs just really remind me of what Melissa said. And I don't know, I just want to say that before he gave us a lesson. Thank you, bro. All. Amen. Real quick, I, Melissa Parton and John, they're here. I want them to stand up real quick. They do um, college and career, and it is excellent. Um, and I just want you to know who they are. And if you have questions about it, um, just see them. Uh, excellent. Uh, as Dave Walker said, transition. So uh, great. Obviously, they are making a difference. And uh, so we thank God for uh, leading them to, uh, to do that. Um, how many of you uh, are from Randolph? Oh, Children's Church. Sorry, Kelly. <laughs> Children's Church, I'm sorry. You're going right through those double doors. And uh, parents, when service is over, uh, you will go there and pick them up. I think I was supposed to do that like 10 minutes ago, uh, but they will, they will hurry along. Also, CIA, don't forget CIA Wednesday at 6.30 for your children uh, as well. How many of you are from Randolph County originally? Hands up, loud and proud. Let's see who you are. Randolph County. Not Guilford, not Davidson, all right? Uh, Randolph County. Hands up, all right? How many of y'all, any original Trinity High School people here? Any of y'all have a bulldog on the back of your car? Bulldog on the back of your car? Like I said, Randolph County. Um, uh, all the Wheatmore people, who are, now that we have two high school, another high school in the area, Wheatmore. Any of y'all have a, what is your logo, a turtle? I can't remember what it is. Uh, uh, turtles, all the, any Wheatmore Wow. Uh, uh, this picture, which of these two groups of men are from Randolph County? Left or right? Um, and it's something in the genes. We've got some more over here. Sounds like uh, that thing. Uh, it is obvious, right? Um, it is obvious, not in every case, but we can spot people. When we go to lunch today, I can tell you I can spot the preachers in the restaurant. I can spot them. Uh, I can tell what the nomination most people are in the restaurant. I can tell uh, by the way uh, that they are dressed. When you go to the hospital, it's obvious who the doctors are, who the nurses are. Uh, it's obvious. I mean, it's even obvious who the smart people are and the dumb people are, right? I have no trouble making that, dis- deciphering that out, right? And it's like, okay, so people are known by different things. Uh, you're known by something, maybe where you work, your uniform. People know who you are. Uh, they know where you work. The reality is that same principle should be true uh, for Christ followers. It should be true for Christians. It should be true for believers. People ought to know that you follow Jesus Christ, okay? They should know it when you get in your car on Sunday morning and come to church, right? Y'all are here, it's okay to say amen, right? Uh, They ought to know that, okay? They ought to know, hey, there's something different. They're not going to Walmart. They're not going to the golf course. They're actually going to worship. And when you get home, it ought to be obvious you've been to church, right? 
It ought to be obvious. People ought to know that you follow Christ and that there should be something different about you. Now, uh, we've all uh, experienced different kinds of Christians, okay? Um, some people uh, in here, you grew up in a more legalistic uh, background, a church. I grew up in a church where if the men were godly, they had white walls around their ears, right? And women always wore um, a dress. And nothing is wrong with that, okay? Uh, matter of fact, I think the pendulum has almost swung too far the other way. Uh, we've gotten where you can't spot a Christian, can't tell a Christian, can't. Uh, they look like the world, act like the world, and that should not be. But the true mark of a follower of Christ is that they love Jesus, okay? And as Christ followers, uh, we should be different. We should have some spiritual insight. We should have some wisdom because the Bible is clear uh, that if you lack wisdom, you can ask God and he will give you wisdom. Okay, My concern is that there are so many Christians, they become known uh, as weird nuts. Right? Um, listen, if you have a Bible verse on your Facebook page, you ought to be careful what kind of articles and videos you share. Listen, when you share something that's a conspiracy theory, that is crazy far out there, and you have a Bible verse at the top or a cross, and please don't put Faith Baptist Church if you're one of these people, okay, because they put us all in the same camp. Listen, and you share some nutso video, they think we're all nuts. They think we're all weird. They think we're all crazy, okay? Listen, if something crazy is going to happen this week or next week, it's probably not going to be some man from Randolph County in the back of his truck sharing a board of prophecy, right? Okay? Christians, that's not what we're to be known for. Crazy. Not so. They believe everything. We look like we're all, and it's just it's a bad reflection to who our God is. It's a bad reflection of Christ. Use some common sense. So don't be known for that. But the Bible is clear what we should be known for and that we should be different. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. Paul is writing to the church at Galatia. These are believers. These are people who have experienced Christ. They've been saved, born again, whatever you want to call it. They are daily following Christ. They are in church. And Paul is reminding them of something. Paul is telling them, hey, this is what happened to me. And Paul says in verse 20, I have been, it's a personal experience. It's something that has happened to him. He says, I have been crucified with Christ. All right. We know what happened on the cross. Christ was crucified. He was put to death. Okay. And Paul is saying what happened to Christ on the cross and we know that when he was raised from the dead, his glorified body, it was different. Okay, Paul is saying, okay, I have aligned myself with Christ, and I too, my physical flesh, the what Paul desires to do, that has been put to death. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. When you accept Christ, when you say, okay, the Holy Spirit has convicted me that I need a relationship with God through Christ. I am not perfect. I have sinned. I have fallen short. There is no way there's anything good in me apart from Christ. When that realization hits you, Okay, And by the way, that's the only time you can truly become born again, right? That has to happen. So when that happens and you place your faith in Christ, the Bible is clear. The old man, person, woman, child, middle schooler, that's dead, right? They're dead. What can a dead person do? Absolutely nothing. Okay, so they're dead. And so Paul is saying, when I accept Christ... That the Paul who used to want to wreak havoc among God's people, the Paul who wanted to stir up trouble, the Paul who was full of drama, the Paul who went around killing Christians, he's dead. And now that I have a Christ follower, he lives in me, and the life that I am living is completely subjected to the rule of Christ, and he walks through me, he talks through me, he brings me through. What I say is filtered through my faith in Christ. Wow. Do we ever need some believers like that? Mm. 
Oh, my goodness. We need some church people, some preachers like that, some of God's people to say, you know what? The person who used to hate is dead. The person who liked to stir up trouble is dead. The person who lived for the next dramatic event at work that I could talk about, hey, that person is dead. The person who had no desire for the things of God, dead, 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 dead. The greatest spiritual thing that can happen in our country, in your family, is for some people to flat out die. Spiritually. Right? Some of y'all are thinking, well, I got some names right now. I mean, it's like, huh? It's like, no, no, I don't about that. But spiritual death, that's when change happens. Listen, you can try to do better. You can try to do the right thing. You can read books, take courses. But until the old man is dead, the old man is still going to rule. It's going to rule. It's going to be in control. But Paul says, I want you to know, church, for me, that old man, it is dead. So the mark of a Christian, the mark of a true believer, listen, it's not, it's not a political party. It's not the fact that you have an elephant or a donkey on your car. It's not some kind of rule that you follow. It's not whether you're woke or not. It's not whether you're a conservative or not. It's not whether you're patriotic or not. The mark of a Christian is a person who has died in Christ now lives through them. And I'm afraid we've kind of forgotten that because when Christ lives through us, it absolutely changes everything. We are called to die to self. Now, he then goes on, he's writing to the church in Ephesians. The next church, and he says this in Ephesians 2.10, and he says, for we are his workmanship, it's he who does the work in us, we are created, or really it's recreated, born again in Christ Jesus for what? For what? Good works. For good works, which God prepared beforehand. Um, good, doing good should be the desire of every believer, all right? The desire to want to do the right thing. Um, listen, you ought to want to do what is right because it's what's right, okay? There should be a desire to love people. There should be a desire to serve people. Uh, they should be, the way you do your job should be different. Huh? Listen, it ought to be different. Listen, there ought to be a difference between in the morning between the person who went to church today and the person who didn't. There ought to be a per difference between the person who says, you know what, I got a Christian bumper sticker, a Christian T-shirt. And listen, by the way, if that's the only reason somebody knows you're a believer or not, yeah, it's a trouble, okay? That's not wise. They ought to know because you do the right thing. Your work ethic is different. What you talk about and who you talk about is very different, Right? A lot of workplace drama could come to a complete halt if even just God's people would zip it and do your job. Huh? Amen, those of you employed people, right? You need to bring all your staff to church, right? And bring them all here, right? It would make a difference. There should be a difference. And listen, I know lots of Christians who do the right thing. They've got the right T-shirt, the right bumper sticker. They have all these things. They keep their house clean like all good Christians should, right? And they do all these things, right? They are ideal. And they say they love God. And they're doing great things, but they're so mean and hateful about it, I'd rather lick the floor at Walmart than be around some Christians, right? I mean, it's like, I think we got this backwards. Listen, the mark of a Christian should be, yes, you do good works. But then Paul, he says uh, this in 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 14. Now, he's written to three churches. And he's, in the church at Corinth, they were, um, they were good people. They had periods of time where they always did the right thing. And they had periods of time where they were so far from God, you wouldn't even know them as a Christian, okay? They had issues with drama. They had issues with uh, sexual immorality, adultery. You got in-laws hooking up. I mean, it was wild. It was a crazy bunch of people, okay? And then when they would get it together, they would start doing the right thing, but then they would forget the love part. I mean, you can help somebody very sweet, or you can help somebody and be a rear end, right? I mean, and so these people had it mixed up. So Paul is reminding them of this in Corinthians 16, verse 14. He said, let what? Everything you do, your worship, your stand uh, for morality, 
your principles, the personal guidelines that you have for you and, and your family, let your job, let your worship, let your church, let your sharing Christ, let everything be done with love. Everything. Lunch, pumping gas. The line at the store, in line at the DMV for half your life, it's like, wow, love? Wait? Love? Them? Love? Serve? Love? Everything. I wish that when everybody got saved, it'd be just like me, right? Y'all feel that way? I really know how culture would work best. Just do what I want you to do, right? There would be no problems at all in this country if everybody would do just what I wanted to do, right? Are you all that way? You're from Randolph County, and most of you are, and you know you are. Yes, exactly where you are. Right. We want that. And the problem with that philosophy is sometimes when people accept Christ— Okay, and they place their faith in Christ, we assume that they're going to become just like us. They're going to, they're going to buy a gun. They're going to eat dark side of flounder. They've got all these little things. They're going to keep their house clean. They're going to obey. They're going to do what's right. Watch the right news. Both, we assume all this stuff. That they're going to become just like us. And why it so bothers me that this is not in the Bible, I wish it were, but it's not. Nowhere in the Bible does it say when people accept Christ, they are going to become southern, gun-owning, flounder-eating people who keep everything clean. That is not in the Bible. Can you believe that? If I were writing the Bible, absolutely, it would be in there, but it's, like, it's not. And because we have recreated what being a Christian is in our mind that it's going to make everybody just like me. We've almost become rude and hateful about our morals and our standards. You can take a biblical stand on sin and still show love according to the Bible. And if your biblical stand is not bathed and covered in love, it's not a biblical stand. If you have to yell and scream and be hateful and say mean things to make your point, it's not biblical. No way. You're not going to find that anywhere in Scripture. Should we be different? Absolutely. But we should be different in love. The next mark is uh, serve involved. All three Scriptures. Jesus calls the disciples. He says, follow me. They didn't follow him. Just to sit in the back seat and watch. They serve. How, any Panther fans in here? No, one of them struggling. Nobody liked them. Nobody liked them in the first service either. Nobody likes the Panthers. Um, anybody like uh, Carolina basketball? Anybody like, um, is there another team? Let's see. What, uh, State? Anybody like State? State? Ohio, whatever it is. Ohio something. Um, they have some kind of team, right? Some kind of team. Right? They have some kind of team. And um, so, like them. Now, here's what. How many of y'all, I think the Panthers played the other week. They lost to the Saints, right? How, anybody watch that game? Uh, anybody sit on their couch and, uh, and yell at the TV, right? Like, I mean, we say, people say the dumbest things. How could you do that? That was a stupid move. I mean, can't you catch the ball, right? People say dumb stuff like that, all right? People say that. You're on your couch, you're yelling at a TV. Is that weird? You're yelling at coaches, you're yelling at players. Is that crazy? That is so crazy, all right? Has anybody ever had the, the team look at the camera and say, that guy on their couch in Randolph County, he's right. That was a dumb play, right? Has that ever happened? That has never happened, right? Has any coach said, hey, there's somebody on their couch uh, in Randolph County, and they said that was a foul, a bad play. We need to do another play. That has never happened, 
right? And if you believe that, you're more weird than the conspiracy theory people, okay? So it's like, that's crazy. That's weird. Nobody says that. I don't know. I mean, I, don't, I watch a couple of games a year, the Super Bowl, part of the Super Bowl, and uh, ACC, the final games, is the only thing that really matters, is really, in my opinion. And so I watch those. But here's what I have figured out. You can watch that thing from your couch on TV. It's a little more fun to be live in the stands, right? To be like the adrenaline of the crowd, the roar of the crowd, to see the people run up and down the field, chasing skin. I mean, whatever. It's just it's pretty cool. A little bit of fun. A little more adrenaline to be there. But nothing compares to the actual players who are catching that ball, running with it, scoring a touchdown, or making a basket, or a hole-in-one, or whatever, right? We would all concur, that's best. That is the most fun. The same is true spiritually. There are Christians right now who say they attend Faith Baptist Church. They're at home right now. They're sitting on their phone. They're looking at what Aunt Martha did on Facebook last night and whose birthday, and they're looking at all that mess. Today at about 2 o'clock, this preacher will text them or Facebook message them and say, Hey, missed you in church today. 90% of them will respond, Oh, man, I just want you to know, you know, didn't make it today, but I was there in spirit. I was there in spirit. Hey, didn't want you, I didn't make it today, and all oh, they got a million and one excuses, all right? Most of them wise, but they'll say, hey, but I was praying for you. Go, preacher, go. Right now, there's a hundred people at home saying, hey, faith is my church, and I'm sure they're sitting on their couch. Oh, I'm praying, dear God, let their spirit fall on that place, and God use, use him, use the music, whatever, right? That's what they're going to tell me when I text them at 2 o'clock today. Are they lying? You better believe they're lying. And may they burn, 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 burn for lying, right? It's like, oh my gosh, how could you do that? Oh, listen, a lie is a lie. And it's like, and Revelation says liars are going to burn, burn, burn. So that's the truth, right? Now, I don't hope that, not really. But it's like, do I think that sometimes? <laughs> but they're lying. They're at home. Go, team, go. Now, have they experienced the same thing we've experienced? No way. No way. Video or not, it's not the same. And then we have people who come, you set your clock, you got up and you came, and not y'all, but first service, and you come in and you sit. And then we'll stand. We'll stand for a few minutes, and I can just feel it. People think, oh, can we sit down pretty soon? I'm getting tired. I'm enough singing. So then you sit down. And then you might have to stand up one more time. And y'all get slower and slower as the as service goes on. Huh? Slower and slower. I know what you're thinking, right? <sighs> Let's see. He's saying two songs. Maybe, surely, to goodness, just one more will be it. And then we're, we're going to sit down, right? We're going to sit down. And that's what we think. And then some of y'all have already been thinking, oh, I hope this Sunday doesn't go on as long as last week because, man, the food, was, uh, the food was, you know, a little iffy. The buffet had been picked over, and it's like, oh, my goodness. Eh? That's what we think. And then we have people who come in, who actually come early because they're so excited to be with God's people. And, man, when it's time to worship, they're all in. When it's time to serve, they're all in. When there's need, help meeting in children's church or CIA, hey, they're all in. All in. And I think, who enjoys serving God the most? Those at home on the couch who are right now thinking about what lie they're going to tell me at 2 o'clock today, right? That crowd. The crowd who comes in, they dread coming and can't wait to leave. Never participate never serve, or the people who say, you know what, it's been a tough week, but God's been good. God's been good. Or you actually going to David Jane and Kelly and saying, hey, see, I need any help. I'm just going to be honest with you. I could not do church like some Christians do church. I guess that may be why I got called. There is no way I could come in here week after week Sit, on, sit in this chair, 
never participate, never worship, and look at my watch and count the minutes till time got. I could not do that. I would just stay home. I would, I'd just soon go to Walmart and do that, right? I mean, it's just like, couldn't do it. And the reason, I think, from the very first call of the disciples to the very end when Jesus said go, it was always active participation. Jesus called the disciples, hey, we're going to serve. We're going to wash feet. We're going to serve lunch. We're going to heal people. It was always they were actively involved. The early church, the reason Paul tells all three of these churches, if you go back and study their history, hey, you got to serve, you got to be involved. Worship is paramount. You got to pray. Because he knew following Christ, and one of the marks would be, hey, I'm going to serve. Corinthians, he calls it, or um, Ephesians, he calls it good works. Good works, praying is a good thing to do. Worship is a good thing to do. Serving, picking up trash, nourishing, it's all a good thing to do. And Paul says, when you do all of this, which is one of the marks of a believer, and you do it in love, wow, it's good for you, and it's good for those who have never heard the good news of Jesus Christ. So today, I want us to make sure that we're very clear on what we as believers are to be known for. The other stuff, is it fun? It's, it's fun. And listen, I love a political joke, and I love to talk about the methods. I mean, I love all that. But we're not known by the nomination. We're not known by a political party. We're not known by the fact of where we live. Randolph Guilford, we're not known by that. Ultimately, as Christ followers, we should be on, hey, we're different. Hey, we, we, we do good stuff. Not to get saved, not to stay saved, but just because of he who lives in us. And all of that should be bathed in love. And there are some people who nobody knows. Nobody knows you've ever made a profession of faith. You may have done it here, you may have done it at home, but nobody, you've never told anybody, hey, I just want you to know, I've placed my faith in Christ. Maybe you need to make that public. The Bible is clear, the first thing we're supposed to do after we accept Christ uh, is really is baptize, bep, to be baptized. It makes it public. It says, you know what, I'm a Christ follower, and I want everyone to know. And if that's you, what a great day, what a great day to make it public. And for the rest of us, I want you to just stop and say, okay, who really knows I'm a Christian? I mean, who really knows I'm a Christ follower? And then why do they know? Why do they think that? Is it because of, and church, let's make sure it's solid. It's, hey, I love him. I worship him. I serve him. I do it in love. Would you stand? Father, today we pray that, God, you would do what only you can do. In spirit of God, we pray you would touch hearts. And God, there are, God, there are people here who probably, who have never made their decision for Christ public. They've never been baptized. God, there are some here who have never made that decision to follow Christ. They've really never been biblically born again, never biblically placed their faith in Christ. And so, God, I pray the Spirit of God, you would do what only you can do. And God, for those of us who are saved, We've made it public. God, I pray that the way we make it known would be done in love. And God, even in our demeanor, in our attitude, in our language, God, that it would be, yes, we should be biblical, and yes, we should take a stand, but God, it must be wrapped in love. And God, we pray now, Spirit of God, do what only you can do. We pray it in Christ's name.